Right here, so in this tutorial, we're gonna create a yin and yang symbol. And if you're like me, you've tried to pen tool this at some point in your career, it's not the most efficient way to do it. And I'm gonna show you a much easier way in this video. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a much easier way to create a yin and yang symbol in Illustrator. And I love this example because this is quite a cool, quirky shape with lots of curves and things. It's very tempting to try and create this with the pen tool or other tools. You can actually create it with circles and there's a much easier way. So we're gonna to jump to the screen now. And I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, so we're now in Illustrator, and as always, I've got a new artboard, 1920 by 1080 pixels. And you can see an example of the yin and yang symbol in the top right corner. So first of all, I'm gonna to go to the toolbar on the left, and left click and hold where the rectangle tool is, go down to Ellipse tool, and then just left click anywhere on the artboard and create a circle that is 600 pixels wide, 600 pixels high, click OK. Position that in the center because if I don't, it's gonna drive me insane. There we go. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Click on the ellipse tool and then just set the value of this circle to half of the previous one. So if you're following along, the first one was 600 pixels. This is going to be 300. And for both of these, I can select them actually and set the fill color to none. And if I select the stroke, I can go to the swatches panel and just pick a color. I'll double click red, set this to global and click okay. And then just make sure that I click that global swatch again. And then what I can do is try and align these circles together. Now, by default, if you go to view, I've got my smart guides on, which is great. I've got my snap to point turned on, which is great. And I've also got snap to pixel on, which is not great. Um, because sometimes when you're doing things like this, Illustrator will snap to the point and the pixel and it gets all kinds of confusing. So I like to turn off snap to pixel just so I know exactly what it's snapping to. If you want to turn snap to pixel on, it can be great, but just not in this example. Now I can drag over both of these and from the align panel over here on the right. And by the way, if you don't see any of these panels, the swatch panel, the stroke panel, the align panel, and you're on an older version of Illustrator, just go up to Window, and then you've got them all here. We have Align, Pathfinder that we'll be using later possibly, Stroke and Swatches, they are all there. But we're going to align these circles together vertically, so let's click this, and then align them to the left. There we go. Next, we're gonna select this circle and create a copy. So we can hold Shift and click. This will drag it in line by holding Shift, but we don't wanna move this circle. So if we hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard as well, you'll see a second cursor appears next to my existing cursor. This indicates that I will be creating a copy. And then when I let go of the mouse, it creates that copy. So that's a really, really easy way to duplicate a shape to another location on your document. Okay, so next I'm gonna select one of these circles and go Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place and we'll hold down shift and scale from the corners. Holding shift will keep it proportional, but we want to scale towards the center. So if we hold down, again, alt or option on the keyboard, it will scale towards the center and you can choose what size you'd like your circular dots to be. So we'll go for something like this. And then again, I can hold shift, alt or option, drag this over and you can see how useful these smart guides are. These pink guides just help me line everything up. Uh, we've kind of created a bit of a face actually. That's, that's quite cute. Um, I like that. <laughs> okay, so you can see actually, see follow my cursor, this is the kind of curvy sort of tadpole shape that we're gonna be creating. We've actually done this with circles. We haven't actually drawn any custom curves or anything. So we know it's going to be, um, I guess for want of a better phrase, geometrically perfect. So what we can do now is drag over everything. And actually what I'm gonna do is swap the fill and the stroke. So it looks like this, it looks like a big ball of red. I find that when using the shape builder tool and strokes, it can get a bit confusing. If you set everything to a fill, there's just less complications from my experience. 
uh, but we can't see the different segments now, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, what else is also a problem is this circle is not vertically central. There we go, much better. Oh, okay, I can breathe again. Right, so we need to see the different segments before we use the Shape Builder tool. So we can press Command or Control Y. We go into Outline Mode. Outline Mode is essentially like a wireframe view with no styling or anything, which is great for helping you work on shapes and things without any uh, colors or things getting in the way. So we can see our paths here. We can drag over everything and then go over and grab the Shape Builder tool here from the toolbar on the left. And if you've never used the Shape Builder tool, that's fantastic. Allow me to blow your freaking mind because this tool is awesome, so useful, especially when designing logos. We can now hover over different segments and you can see they become highlighted with this like cross hatching effect. And we can click and drag. And you can draw a squiggly line if you want, but you can also drag through into another shape and you can see the red area becomes highlighted. This is going to merge these two shapes into a single shape. You let go, boom, you've got a single shape. We can do the same here, drag through, boom. We've actually created the yin and yang bit using circles. So it's so easy, no curves required. So we can come out of outline mode, command or control Y on the keyboard. And it still looks like this, um, which is a bit of a problem. So if we select these circles here, and we'll go to the swatches panel. We'll double click on uh, yellow, for example, and just check global. The color really doesn't matter at the moment. Uh, we'll leave that red. We'll make this half yellow. Make that half red. Now, with the Shape Builder tool, sometimes you kind of get little pieces of artifacts and paths and bits left over. So what I like to do very quickly is just pull this apart. Uh, you can see here, you get a few random duplication locations of shape sometimes. I don't know why it's, it's bizarre, but those are going to cause a problem. So let's undo all of that. You've got your edit undo over there. So what I'm going to do to get around this is I select this red piece here, hold shift. No, nope. select the yellow piece and select the red piece. Then select the small red piece and the larger yellow piece. So I've got these four pieces selected and I'm gonna to go to edit and cut. This removes them from the document, but also copies them to the clipboard. So now what I can do is drag over, I mean, look at this, look at all these pieces. We don't want any of that. It's just something that happens sometimes. We can drag over all of it, delete or backspace, gone. Now, if I go to edit, paste in place, I know I've just got those four pieces and any of the stuff in the background, which will really, it complicates things, trust me. <laughs> um, I can now pull these apart and it's literally just those four shapes, which is gonna be much less complicated. And because we made these global swatches, we can actually go and edit these and it will update the entire document. So we'll change this here. So let's go and change the red to like a slightly charcoal-y black. We'll change the yellow to white. Of course, we can't see that side, but we can rotate this 90 degrees holding shift and rotating from the corner. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just add a border, like a black outline. And we know the size of our yin and yang symbol is 600 pixels. So with the ellipse tool, we can click on the artboard and just create another 600 pixel circle. Swap that fill and the stroke. Set the stroke color to our global swatch that we've created, and I'm just gonna Thicken up the stroke weight, bit 420. And again, I can align this nice and easily because those smart guides are just super helpful. And if I go to the stroke panel, you can see here my stroke is set to align to the center. You can align a stroke to a path on the inside, the center, or the outside. The problem for this example is you can see this curve just isn't quite smooth here. So if I select this stroke, and align this to the outside of the path, you can see it does that uh, because it's not actually aligned properly. So again, we just go into outline mode, shimmy that down, there we go, and come out of outline mode. So remember, command or control Y for outline mode, incredibly useful for identifying problems, but now by changing the alignment of the stroke to the outside, we have a nice smooth curve. And what we can do to finish off 
is drag over everything. When you're happy with your stroke weight and all that good stuff, just go to Object, Expand Appearance, Object, Expand. Keep expanding until you can expand no longer. That's how I do it. And then what we can do is grab our Shape Builder tool again. And we can just drag through all of this. And then sometimes when you use the Shape Builder tool, it does go a bit weird and kind of remove the color. I'm not entirely sure why, but we can just set the fill color back to this. And if I zoom in and go back into outline mode, you can see that you get these strange artifacts. Sometimes this just happens. It's annoying. I don't know why it happens, but you can use the lasso tool to select these kind of artifacts, these fragment pieces of anchor point. You can select them with the lasso tool and just hit delete or backspace. And I'm going to zoom in here. You can also select them with the direct selection tool and just hold shift. This is something that I find happens quite a lot when using the Shape Builder tool. So that's, I guess, one downside to using it. But, you know, uh, solving problems and cleaning up shapes like this in Illustrator is something that I do all the time. And you just get used to it. It's fine. You know, there's, it's so complicated and you're combining different shapes together. It's just one of those things that happens. And if I move this around now, we've just got to select this little black circle with the rest of our shape. And from the Pathfinder panel, just unite these together from the top left there. That's the top left the option, the option? The top left option, which is unite. And you can see now, if I go into outline mode, we've got a nice clean path and I can move this around and it all moves together as one shape. Uh, so there we go. That's how to create a yin and yang symbol in Illustrator. It's always good actually. I mean, it's annoying for me when things don't go smoothly like that, but it's really good because this is stuff that happens in the real world. You try and create shapes, you get bits of path left over, things get complicated. It's, it's just what happens. So um, it's really cool because then I can show you how to get around some of those issues. So there we go. That's me trying to find a silver lining for when things don't go quite according to plan. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video or you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you.